Hi, I'm Tyson. And I'm Rosa. And, and this, this is, is our converted, converted Ford Transit, Transit van, van tour. tour. Start with the outside. Um, obviously, we got some big, meaty tires on here. BF Goodrich KO2s. Fun fact for Ford Transit conversions, this actually lifted our van 1.75 inches, which was key because we have a generator underneath, underneath which I'll show you. Underneath here, we have our Cummins Onan generator, which gives us enough power to fuel our air conditioner in the heat if we need to, and any of our other household electronics, along with a spare tire. Up on the top here, we have four 100 watt solar panels, as well as a max air fan, uh, air conditioner, which has come in handy a little bit uh, in those hot days, especially with the pug. And then on the back, I don't know if you can see that because I'm just hanging on here, but we also have a fan in our bathroom as well as a plumbing vent for the stinky stuff. Right here, we have our uh, dirty business, our sewer tank uh, disposal. So when it comes time to dump, we go to any sandy dump station uh, at a campsite or wherever, uh, but basically we hook that up. We can dump our black tank, which is our toilet, and we can dump our gray tank, which is showering, hand washing, all that stuff. We have our exhaust vent for our furnace, uh, which also happens to be our water heater as well. It's a Truma Combi, very reliable unit. We haven't had many issues with it. We also have some water inlet. This one is for our actual drinking water. Uh, you plug in a normal hose at a campsite or at home, and that just gives you full pressure through your sinks. This one is a black tank rinse. So this is an actual RV unit. There is a gray tank and a black tank, which comes in handy for us. Uh, this one gives you the ability to be able to wash out the tank so that there's gets all the gunk out. We also have our plug-in for shore power. Basically, it's a 30 amp power plug and it gives us the juice to power all of our household electronics, air conditioner, uh, Rose's hair straightener, coffee maker, microwave, whatever you need. We also have a uh, cable outlet, which we have never used, uh, but it's there in case we want it. So we're ready to tow. We got the hookups for a trailer, uh, hitch and electronics. And then inside here, we kind of have our components. We have storage. This is usually where our electrical plug would be, slash extension cord. It's kind of set up where we're, uh, where we're staying right now, but we have our hose. Uh, fresh water connection. So this is the main way how we fill up our water. We'll just fill up a hose, top it up till it's full. Uh, but we also have a electrical outlet back here in case we need to run power tools or anything out the back. We have a outdoor shower. And then we also have our bottle jack right here for roadside service if we ever need to change a tire. Uh, that's just wrapped up in a plastic bag because we do usually have a emergency six gallon water tank as a reserve so when our water runs out we can hear the pump we know what it sounds like we'll come we'll fill up the emergency one and then we'll know that within that day or the next day we'll have to find some water underneath here is just some components for plumbing for winterizing uh, to get underneath the shower this is not a storage compartment but i do store some things in there and then we also have some storage for some miscellaneous items. Uh, they got a hatchet up there for slicing wood, a dry bag, uh, this little handy fella hook up the hose to, and that goes inside the fresh water. But just some odds and ends, just some extra garage space because we don't have much garage space in this unit. Here we've got a power step, outdoor lights, and a power awning. We don't use it too much, but it comes in handy. Now I'm going to let Rosa show you the inside. Come on in! Welcome to the inside of our tiny home. Tyson and I live here with our two pugs, Lola and Dixie. Dixie may not look like a pug but we were told she was half pug so they've always been our two pugs so this is our command center yeah kind of like a control panel here a digital level uh so we can keep track of our voltage the levels for our fresh water tank propane uh, and our gray tank and our black tank this is our water pump switch and then we also have a starter ignition for our generator 
the little thermometer for our furnace. Dixie is a little chilly, so we're gonna get her sweatered up. However, we do have a furnace that we can heat with electricity or propane. And we have slept in this van in negative 20 weather and we have been completely warm. This van is unique to some other vans you may see because we do have windows all along the exterior, which we do lose more heat than other builds you may see. However, we have invested in some great insulators for the front, which we will show you later. Some extra insulation here um, to protect our max air fan. And our furnace keeps us warm all night, no matter what. Please note, Tyson is very organized. I am not organized at all. Cleanliness is very important to me, but organization means nothing. So it's a constant battle because Tyson is trying to keep things organized. I'm trying to keep things clean and we're both trying to keep the other one happy. Up here, we keep our sheets. In here, we just keep some odds and ends. We keep all of our cooking items in here. Um, you may not know this, but we used to own two restaurants and Tyson is very culinary forward. We've got lots of baking items, spices. He cooks a lot of things from scratch and I'm getting a lot better. Lots of more pantry items here. But basically, these three cabinets are our pantry because we love to eat good food. In here, we keep even more canned items. We always want to be prepared in case we do end up at a beautiful secluded spot and we just want to stay there for a week. We don't want any reason to leave. So we keep extra things like canned mushrooms and things like that for times when it's hard to have fresh produce. In here, we have all Tyson's tools, which have come in so handy because in a van, it is constant upkeep. For instance, these cabinets are constantly breaking and Tyson is constantly fixing them. Thanks, babe. <laughs> We've got some more tools and these things come in handy if we're at the side of the road. What do you fix at the side of the road? I did the brake pads in a parking lot. I dropped the batteries and replaced them in a parking lot. Um, and then just other miscellaneous work under the van. When I put the solar panels on, th that all came in handy. Going over to friends' houses and they need stuff fixed, it's just good to have it all on hand. We have a ducted furnace with four vents. One in the washroom, one right here, one here, and one here. And this is a propane slash carbon monoxide detector to keep us safe all the time. Welcome to our kitchen. We've got a Dometic fridge. This unit is quite the power hog and we really wouldn't recommend getting a unit this size. This little unit here is a convection oven slash microwave which we rarely use because you need to use the generator or be plugged in in order to use this. In a future build, we would never ever put anything like this in here. We just don't tend to use a microwave even when living in a home. And it would just be nice to have some more cabinet space or a conventional oven. In here, we keep bowls, plates, forks and knives and if we accidentally get this in a bag if we get takeout we save it because we try to reduce our waste as much as possible we've got our sink here which is a decent size we potentially would like a larger one but we are very happy with what we have this folds down which is nice so we can close it when driving or if we have some dishes that we didn't wash and we don't want to look at we've got some spices up here these are the items that we use the most, so we like to have them on hand, and they really do need to be refilled. So you just pull it down, open it up, use what you want to use, and put it back up. So this is our two burner stove. In a van, most things 
are multi-purpose because you're working with a little bit of space. So we like to keep this butcher block here so we can cut up items, prep them before we cook them. We use things like this cloth to stop larger items from falling off the shelves when we're driving. And you'd be surprised, but this actually does the trick. So this is a Dometic two burner propane cooktop. It does the trick. We love it. And we can cook some pretty amazing meals in here. So up here, we just keep things that we use to cook. Pots, pans, etc. extra glasses. It's honestly enough space for us. <laughs> we just have some tea over here and then a few decorations because it is nice for it to be decorated and feel homey. You spend so much time in here, you want to feel inspired. And then right up here, we just put in some hooks. So we have a nice little coat rack for all of our winter stuff or big bulky items. And that kind of, uh, we'll show you the bed setup later, but it kind of blocks the front. Even though we do have a cover for the front, it's just a little bit of an extra security blanket. So this little puppy turns around and you'd really be surprised how much more open it feels when you have it turned around. This is a little workstation slash cutting station. We have some plugs over there for plugging in the laptop. Those are just like residential plugs. So again, when we're plugged in or running the generator. And we keep all of our reusable bags down here. And when you're done, it just pops down. So only one swivel seat with this build so that we wouldn't be able to have two, but we do make use of this space here behind the other chair. We've got a telescopic ladder. We hide our garbage here. Snow brush. And then we've got some road tracks. If we were to get stuck in the mud or something, we luckily have not had to use them yet, but it is nice knowing that they're there. We just keep odds and ends up here. This is the place that we do want to get more organized, maybe some nice baskets or something. But currently we just keep face masks, hats, glasses, all that sort of stuff. This is the control panel for our water heater furnace, the Truma Combi, as I told you. Uh, but basically we can set the heat here, whatever we want it to be. Turn the water heater on. It's got three settings, eco, high and boost. So we can switch from propane or electricity, uh, which comes in handy. And we just have a little charging center here, a couple USBs and a car outlet port thing. We also have a beautiful Jensen DVD player TV combo that we barely ever use. And then just up here, we have our Max Air fan. Uh, it only pushes air out, but that's still effective because we have another fan in the washroom and we can get a cross breeze going. And then we have our air conditioner. It's a roof mounted air conditioner. Uh, there's basically fan, max, air conditioner, high. It, it, get, it gets the place really cool, really quick in a pinch, which is really handy. And another thing to note, we cannot use the air conditioner unless we're plugged in or we have the generator going. So it is something that we do not use a lot, but it is a huge luxury to have the option when necessary. At night, we like to open these two side windows, one on each side of us when sleeping, get that fan going. It just pulls the air right in and it does a really great job of keeping things cool at night. Welcome to our bathroom. This is our toilet slash shower. We've got room for all of our towels here, all of our toiletries. The top shelf is mine, middle shelf is Tyson's, and the bottom is a combination of both of us, things like vitamins and all that sort of stuff. In here, we keep all of our clothes, Tyson's, Nice and organized. Mine, a little bit less organized, <laughs> but we both use the packing cube idea. And I'm going to tell you half of the clothes in here, I didn't even wear the past three months that we were away. So I have way too much clothes and I'm going to put some in storage. Some people think you live in a van, you have no room. Truly, we do have enough room. 
Here's a picture of two of my beautiful nieces, <laughs> Peyton and Lexi, on her fifth birthday. We've got a tap here. Lots of water. We could go a week before needing to fill up. We've got a shower here and I'll show you how it works. We use this curtain to block everything in the bathroom. Shower, hot and cold. It's a wet bath so this toilet can get wet. However, and the drains right on the floor. However, we do prefer to shower outside, at gyms, other things like that, because it is quite tight in here. It uses a, a, quite a bit of our water supply and it takes time to squeegee and clean up everything afterwards. Just keep some odds and ends in this basket here, dish soap, vinegar, some um, vitamins for the dogs. And when Rose has been bad, you can just lock her in there and come chill on the other side of the van. <laughs> also, you can open this back door and poop looking at mountains. Wow. You can poop looking at mountains. Living the dream. We also have uh, outlets here as well as an inverter. So I wired this switch in because the only way to turn on the fridge is a knob inside. So I leave that knob turned on. And then now if we want to turn the fridge on or off at night, depending on, uh, because our fridge can't actually run overnight because it is such a power hog, only during the day when we have solar, if we're boondocking. But we just press that and the fridge kicks on. We've got a system where we keep ice packs up here during the day in the freezer. We get them frozen and then at night when we turn off the fridge, we place them in the fridge compartment and everything stays nice and cool. So we purchased this van in 2019. At the time, we owned two restaurants and we were working 70, 80 hours a week. We were overwhelmed and we were tired of the life that we were living. Tyson had told me about van life. I was like, no way, that is too small. I could do a big RV, but never a van. He then pointed me in the direction of other YouTubers that really got me inspired. We'd done a lot of RV travel uh, leading up to that point. We've taken our trailer all over North America, uh, different trailers multiple times, and I just wanted something that would be perfect for the all around awesome adventure vehicle. And I was always looking at the cargo vans, the, the van conversions. Once I started looking at all the videos on YouTube, I was hooked. I was working all day and then looking at these videos at night thinking, I want to live this life. I want to be free. Why are we doing what we're doing? So we got really serious about looking for a van. We did not have the time to convert a van ourselves. It just wasn't possible with the lifestyle that we were living. And we were actually able to find a van from a company that converts them, rents them out, and then after a year or two, they sell off that fleet and they make newer models. For us, I've done research, I have watched a million videos, and we personally felt that the price that we were paying for this converted van was very similar to what the end product was when people purchased a van and did all of the work themselves. There's also the opportunity cost that you need to consider when you're thinking about the hours of work put into converting a van. If you can work those hours elsewhere and make more money to purchase the van, it sometimes makes sense. At that time, we were burnt out, we had no time, and we didn't know how to convert a van. There's two really positive factors for us in buying a professionally converted van. 
The first one was we were able to finance it, which means that our dream of van life was instant. The other is that we are able to properly insure it. I've heard horror stories of people spending tons of money converting a van and then having so much difficulty insuring it. And when you put so much money into something, you want to make sure that you're protected. There's a lot of luxuries in this van that we would really never put in a convert. Air conditioner, generator, TV, convection oven, microwave. All of these things we got for a very similar price to what people paid after converting their own vans. We don't really use them, but they're nice to have. Fast forward two years, we're now living in our van full time, spending so much time with family when we are around. It's just, it's just great to be able to be mobile and we've made this thing our home and we love it so much and we're entirely grateful for everything that this vehicle has allowed us to be able to do over the course of the pandemic. So this is the outside looking in at night with the lights on. And as you can see, you can see everything. So we're gonna show you how to put it into night stealth mode. Like helping uh, warm the bed up. We've got ourselves here a beautiful king size bed that is enough for two humans and two pugs. So I'm six foot two. Uh, I can lay full out. Okay, my feet are touching. I still got another six inches, uh, but I can lay full sprawl. Rose is still over there, full sprawl. We got lots of room. <laughs> Dixie's got her own little playroom on the bed. It's just great. It's just it's nice. So it's pretty much, we have about, there's like four inches here uh, from the windowsill uh, to uh, the edge of the bed, which is insulation and whatnot. But it's basically the entire width of the, the cargo van. The Ford Transit van that we have is the largest cargo van you can have. It's the lar longest extended rear and the highest extended roof. So this guy came with the van, uh, with uh, with the convert, and there's also a skirt that goes around, kind of like a what you'd see in those old, like it, it's a curtain style one that doesn't really insulate and it doesn't really provide like that tight blackout for if you're trying to like stealth camp in a city. Uh, so we got some upgraded ones which, which I'll show you, but this one works pretty good. It has magnets sewn into it, so it just basically attaches to the uh, metal of that. So that covers the side window. Uh, and then I'll show you these side ones here. So these are from a company called Adventure Van Co. They were a little pricey, uh, but they have nice thick insulation as well as sewn in magnets as well that stick nice and tight. But that basically goes on the passenger side. And the magnets, I think there's like six different magnet points. That one's up. Number two. And then the big one, which, uh, oh, they got their logo here. Adventure Van Gogh. Uh, this one has Reflectix on one side and black on the other. When we're urban camping, stealth camping, I like to do the black out because at nighttime, it's less noticeable. It just looks like a like a, a cargo van that's that, that no one's occupying. But with this, it's kind of like a giveaway. So if we're like somewhere really hot, like in a desert, then we'll definitely use the Reflectix to shoot the sun away. But if we're trying to be stealthy, we'll put the black up. So the big one tucks in, goes under the mirror and the sun visors, hold it in place roughly, stuff a pillow, pull it up, and we're pretty well there. So let me take this outside and show you. So we're just walking out here, 
in the dark, but as you can see, a little light popping through up there. It depends on the angle. But if you're just driving by, right now we're right where our heads are. You can't see a thing. Thank you so much for watching our van tour. We hope you subscribe so you can follow our van life journey. This was our first van tour and we were kind of a little nervous. We probably skipped over a lot of things. If you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments section. We are planning on maybe doing a more beefed up version of a van tour in the next coming weeks. Uh, a little bit of a collab. So if you have any questions that we missed, we will definitely go over it there. So please, 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 we want to be as thorough as possible to answer everyone's questions uh, about our build. So thank you so much.